Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I thought we could spend some time talking about face mask breakouts and all of the best ingredients that you can use in your skincare routine to treat existing breakouts and prevent future breakouts from forming. So I know so many people, myself included, are experiencing more breakouts than normal in this region of their face as a result of wearing these bad boys right here. What a joy, aren't we lucky? So in this video, I'm going to be talking through a lot of different ingredients that are great for acne prone skin. Even if you're someone that's not really dealing with face mask acne, but you just have acne in general, this video is still going to be great for you because each of these ingredients are awesome, but they do different things on the skin. So I will explain that potential side effects and which ones may be better for certain skin types than others, and then products that I would recommend that have those ingredients in them. So if you guys are interested in hearing all of that, you need some help in the acne department, then you have come to the right video. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so I thought it would actually be helpful to start off by really quickly explaining what the four major causes of a breakout are. So the four things that are kind of working behind the scenes that eventually cause a breakout to form on the skin, because then when I'm talking through each ingredient, I can explain which of those four causes that ingredient is helping to treat and target and why it's especially helpful. So the four major causes contributing factors of a breakout include pore obstruction or a clogged pore, which I feel like is the term most people use, excessive sebum production, inflammation, and acne bacteria on the skin. The combination of those four things is what eventually leads to a breakout, and each of the ingredients that I'm going to talk through helps to address different causes of that breakout. Okay, so now let's start to talk about each of those ingredients, and I think it's important for me to clarify here that I will be talking through quite a few different ingredients, but that is not me suggesting that you need to use all of them in your skincare routine in order Order to get clear skin. I actually would kind of suggest the opposite of that. Introduce ingredients like this into your routine slowly and with caution. Start with one or maybe two at a time and see how your skin responds before testing out other things. Because what can happen if you use a lot of these ingredients together is that you can just really end up irritating your skin. A lot of these ingredients have side effects like irritation, dryness, flakiness, redness, sensitivity, etc. So Throwing them all into your skincare routine at one time is not what I would recommend because that is going to really increase the likelihood for skin irritation. So wanted to clarify that. This is basically me just presenting you with a menu of options to hopefully help you to figure out which one may work best for your skin or which one you would like to test out first. So with that being said, let's start off with my top recommendation, which is, I'm sure a lot of you could guess, Retinoids. Retinoids are derivatives of vitamin A and they include ingredients like tretinoin, retinaldehyde, adapalene, and retinol. Each of those ingredients kind of behaves on the skin in different ways as far as how potent they are. I did upload a couple videos recently talking about all things retinoids. I'll link both of them below. So the difference between all those ingredients, which ones are the most versus least potent, the benefits that you can see in using a retinoid, and then I also have a video talking through how to start off using retinoids and tips and tricks for how to decrease irritation if you are currently trying to introduce them into your routine. So again, linked below, but all of those ingredients are examples of retinoids. And you guys are probably all too familiar at this point with me talking about tretinoids and for anti-aging purposes or just retinoids in general. They are amazing for anti-aging, but they're especially helpful for those with acne prone skin because they help to regulate skin cell growth, formation, and division. So they've been shown to help to prevent and treat comedones like whiteheads and blackheads and inflammatory acne like cystic acne. And as far as product recommendations in the retinoid category, it of course is going to depend on which type of retinoid you're looking to use in your skincare routine. If you're not currently using any retinoid at all and you want to start, what I would recommend is starting off with retinol. And in one of those videos that I just mentioned, I do give you guys recommendations for really good starter retinol. So things that you can start off using to get your skin acclimated or adapted to that ingredient so you can hopefully minimize irritation that does happen whenever you introduce a retinoid into your skin carotene. So I have recommendations there. One of them includes the CeraVe Retinol Serum. They have a couple different options. This one is their resurfacing retinol serum. So this is great because not only does it have retinol, but it also has niacinamide and licorice root. Both of those ingredients are great for acne prone skin as well. So that's an option or the Dermatology Retinol is my personal favorite. This is a 0.5% retinol complex. 
not only does it have retinol in it, but it also has vitamin C and vitamin E, and it's just such a nice skin conditioning formulation. Really, really love that. If you're interested in purchasing anything from Dermatology, I do have a 20% off discount code, which is just Abby20. It gets you 20% off their whole site, so I will link that below. And then, of course, tretinoin is the ingredient that I personally use, and there are a few different routes that you can go in order to get access to that ingredient. It is something that you need a prescription for, so you can either get it from your dermatologist or through a service like Curology that has dermatology providers working for them. That's what I currently do. No, this is not sponsored, but I have my little prescription here that has tretinoin in it, as well as two other ingredients that also help with acne. So if you wanna know more about Curology, how the service works, and what my thoughts are on Curology, I have an unsponsored video for you guys that I will also link below, but those are kind of the two main paths that you can go to get access to tretinoin. All right, the next ingredient is benzoyl peroxide, and this is an active ingredient that you can either get over the counter or through your dermatologist in higher concentrations if you have a need for that. The reason why benzoyl peroxide is great for acne prone skin is that it helps to kill acne bacteria on the skin and it's anti-inflammatory, so it helps to really target two of the main causes of breakouts. The thing about benzoyl peroxide that's not great is that it's definitely known for its potential to irritate and dry out the skin. So if you have incredibly sensitive skin or incredibly dry flaky skin, this may be an ingredient worth skipping altogether, especially in higher concentration. So if you are interested in using benzoyl peroxide, I would recommend starting off with products that have it in a lower concentration at around 5% or below. And I would also recommend starting off with a cleanser versus a leave-on product because you're going to rinse out off your face, of course. That's going to decrease the contact that your skin has with that ingredient and hopefully lower the potential for irritation. But I have to be really careful with this ingredient. I have sensitive skin and because I'm using tretinoin, which is a very potent retinoid, adding benzoyl peroxide to my skincare routine, especially in high concentrations or too frequently can really irritate my skin, cause a lot of redness and flakiness. So just be careful with it. Oh my gosh, I keep this in the shower. There's so much water in this right now, oh no. The first is the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser and this has 4% benzoyl peroxide in it. So I think this is a perfect product to start off with if you have never used benzoyl peroxide before because it's at a low concentration and again, it's a cleanser. So this says it will clear acne pimples and blackheads, help to prevent new acne and allow the skin to heal. And the reason that I like this is it's not just benzoyl peroxide and cleansing agents, but it also has ceramides, hyaluronic acid and niacinamide to help to replenish, hydrate and soothe the skin. So what I do when I use this is I will apply it in the shower, which is why I said I leave this in the shower and I will leave it on my skin for up to a few minutes before rinsing off and then I will just move along with my day and I only use this a couple times a week if I am using it. Some weeks I don't use it at all if I don't feel like I need it, but again, like I said, I have to be really careful with it. Okay, next ingredient is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid that exfoliates the skin. It's actually able to penetrate the pore because it's oil soluble, so it's really helpful in loosening any dirt, blockage, buildup that you have in the pore that eventually can contribute to a breakout. Also, it's anti-inflammatory, which is great, less so than benzoyl peroxide, but it is also supposed to be less irritating, less drying than benzoyl peroxide. So if that ingredient just doesn't work with you and your skin, salicylic acid may be a good alternative. My first recommendation is the CeraVe Renewing SA Cleanser. So this is a salicylic acid cleanser and I use it in the exact same way as the CeraVe Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. So in the shower, I'll leave it on my skin for up to a few minutes and then rinse it off then move along with my morning skincare routine. And again, I think this is a great way to start off using salicylic acid if you do not currently use it in your skincare routine because of the minimal contact and lower concentration. So CeraVe doesn't disclose the concentration of salicylic acid in this product, but I am guessing it's a much lower concentration than other products that do disclose the concentration. Otherwise they would say that if it was like a 10%. So good starter salicylic acid product. Okay, next, another CeraVe SA product. I feel like I actually have the most recommendations in the salicylic acid category, so we have a couple more for this ingredient, but this is their SA lotion for rough and bumpy skin. Great one because not only does it have salicylic acid in it, but it also has lactic acid, which is an alpha hydroxy acid that also helps to exfoliate the skin, but it's supposed to be great for dehydrated skin because it also helps to hydrate. So I like the addition of those two ingredients to this lotion alongside moisturizing replenishing ingredients to help to minimize the potential for irritation, but this is definitely going to be more likely to cause irritation than something like that cleanser. So be careful with this one. They also do have a cream as well, and I have a video actually talking through all of their SA products. 
I'll link that below if you want to know more about ingredients and see the differences in formulation, but really great line for acne prone skin. Okay, my next recommendation is a mask. So for those of you that don't want a cleanser or a moisturizer, you want something that is kind of a treatment, then this will be the product for you. So this is the Ordinary's 2% salicylic acid mask. This is going to be great for those of you that have really oily skin because not only does this have salicylic acid, but it also has kaolin, which is a type of clay in it that really helps to absorb excessive sebum. So two of those main classes, again, right there that we're helping to treat and target. This, I would say, is going to kind of be in between a cleanser and leave-on product as far as potential for irritation. So this you're only supposed to leave on for up to 10 minutes. I actually also have a review on this. Anything that I have a review on out of these products that we're talking about, I will be sure to list below if you want more detail, but that's a good one. Okay, the last recommendation that I have for you guys is just a completely different formulation. So if you don't want a mask or a moisturizer or a cleanser, I have another option for you. It's the COSRX BHA Blackhead Power Liquid. So this I would kind of treat as a toner or an essence, something that you apply to the skin after cleansing, but before thicker serums or moisturizers. It's a really, really great product, just focused on that salicylic acid, also has some other great ingredients in it as well. I think this one is awesome and I really, really like the formulation. It just feels nice and replenishing. So this will work with all skin types, but again, if you have really oily skin and you don't want something that's thick and heavy and creamy, I think you'll really enjoy this. Okay, the next ingredient is mandelic acid. This is another ingredient that's going to help to exfoliate the skin, but instead of being a BHA, it's actually an AHA or alpha hydroxy acid. And I recently, I feel like really dug into research about this particular ingredient because I find it really interesting. It's different than other AHAs, like for example, glycolic acid, because it's not just water soluble, it's actually also oil soluble. So similar to salicylic acid, it's actually able to directly penetrate the pore, which is why it's so great for oily acne prone skin or those that just have clogged pores. And also compared to glycolic acid, it actually is larger in molecular weight. So it penetrates more slowly, making it safer for sensitive skin types or dry skin types that are easily irritated by alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid, which can definitely cause some irritation. So I thought that was really cool. This is one of those acids that's going to be safer for all skin types, dry, sensitive, oily, it's great for as well. Definitely one worth looking into if you have tried to use exfoliants before to help to clear up your skin and you didn't have much success with your skin at tolerating that ingredient. I have two products to recommend. The first is the Ordinary's Mandelic Acid 10% with Hyaluronic Acid Serum. So this basically just has those two ingredients in it. Not my favorite formulation ever, it is a little bit greasy, but once it's applied to the skin, it does dry down pretty well and doesn't leave your skin looking super shiny or greasy. So if you can get past that initial application, not being so pleasant, I think it's a really great option. The other alternative that I have is actually a combination of mandelic acid and salicylic acid. So this is the Geek and Gorgeous Cheer Up 6%, 6%, 6% mandelic plus BHA liquid. It says it will refine, clear, and balance the skin. I love this brand, oh my goodness. Not only do they have the cutest packaging ever, but they have such, such great products that just get to the point with ingredients and just don't have any other BS thrown in there. So this is going to be for those of you that don't like the formulation of that kind of slightly greasier serum and just want something that's purely a liquid that feels like water on the skin. So exact same thing as the COSRX BHA Power Liquid, apply this after cleansing and before serums and moisturizers. Okay, the next ingredient is another acid, but it's not an AHA or a BHA, it's actually a carboxylic acid, it's azelaic acid. And this ingredient is definitely different from AHAs and BHAs, it's not an exfoliant in the sense that those types of ingredients are, but it's something that does help to essentially promote healthy skin cell formation at a very basic level which is one of the reasons that it's great for acne prone skin, but it also is anti-inflammatory and helps to kill acne bacteria. The reason that this ingredient is one to consider is that it's supposed to be less irritating and drying than some of the other ingredients that I've talked about so far. So if you haven't had good luck with salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, definitely check out azelaic acid because it's supposed to be safer for sensitive skin and actually something that also helps to calm irritated skin and minimize redness. So 
definitely going to be the one for you if you're super sensitive. My first recommendation is the Ordinary's 10% Azelaic Acid Suspension. And I know that not everyone loves this formulation. It's definitely something that isn't the most pleasant to apply. It has that true kind of silicone primer feel that I know not everyone loves, but the reason that this is great if you have oily skin is because it actually does help to mattify the skin a little bit. So something that works really well underneath maybe sunscreens that are extra glowy or really dewy foundations if you are oily. Geeking Gorgeous actually also has an azelaic acid serum that is that more liquidy formulation. So if you're interested in that kind of formula and you don't like this kind of thing, then I would recommend that one instead. Okay, so those are the ingredients that I wanted to talk through with you guys first because I would say they're definitely the most effective and most common acne fighting ingredients that are used to help to keep your skin clear. But I totally recognize the fact that just one of those ingredients may not be enough for you. And if you try to add, like I said, more than one of those ingredients together, it may just really irritate your skin. So I wanted to give you guys a couple other options that you could add to your skincare routine that are going to be less likely to cause irritation, but could be really helpful. The first is going to be another mask, and it's essentially any mask that has kaolin or clay in it. So... Like we already talked about with the salicylic acid mask, that ingredient helps to absorb excess oil. So this is going to be for those of you that have super oily skin and specifically want something to help to absorb that excess oils to keep your skin not looking super shiny throughout the day and then also help to prevent future breakouts from forming. So one of my recommendations is the Aztec Secret Indian Healing Clay Mask. This is just 100% natural bentonite clay, so something that you mix with water and then can apply to the face. You also could just use this on the area of your face that you're acne prone, so if you have combo skin and you're not super oily everywhere, you could just use this in your T-zone, really however you would like, but this again is also something that you only leave on the skin for five to ten minutes before rinsing off and moving on with the rest of your skincare routine. So any mask you'll want to apply after cleansing and then before everything else. So cleanse, mask, rinse off, and then, you know, whatever you're doing, treatment, serum, etc. The only thing that's kind of a bummer about that mask is that it's kind of a DIY thing, so you have to add water to it, mix it together yourself, which can be really, really messy, and powder can get everywhere. So if you're not interested in that, the Inky List also has a kaolin clay mask that I will link below for you guys. The next ingredient is rosehip oil, and rosehip oil is an antioxidant that's actually a source of vitamin A. So if you remember from the beginning when I was saying retinoids are derivatives of vitamin A, that is why this ingredient is potentially going to be helpful for acne prone skin because it's another source of that ingredient. This is going to be great for those of you that have drier dehydrated skin that are looking to use a facial oil that's also going to help with acne. Maybe not going to be for those of you that have oily skin, but obviously up to personal preference, of course. And while this is not a super well-researched ingredient as it relates to acne, I know that there are many people who use this and love it, so I wanted to include it for that reason. Definitely a good option to look into, again, if you have dry or dehydrated skin. The one that I would recommend is just the Ordinary's Rosehip Oil, so this is just 100% organic cold-pressed rosehip oil. Okay, the next two ingredients I'm going to talk about together because I have a product that actually has both of them. These are things that you don't necessarily need to seek out in separate products if you don't want to, but they're good things to look for on ingredient labels, but I do still have product recommendations. So the first ingredient is niacinamide. This is vitamin B5. Not only is it going to help to calm and soothe the skin, if you have an active breakout, which of course is going to be inflamed and irritated, but it also helps to regulate sebum production. So my absolute favorite niacinamide serum is the Dermatology Needleless Serum. Aside from niacinamide, it has really amazing anti-aging ingredients as well. So this is my go-to holy grail nighttime serum. I love this stuff. But the second ingredient that I wanted to recommend is zinc. And this is an ingredient that actually helps to kill acne bacteria. And of course, I am sure almost everybody at this point knows about the Ordinary's Niacinamide Plus Zinc Serum. So this has 10% zinc, 1% niacinamide. That's why it's something that's great for acne prone skin, but I do know that for some, this actually causes them to break out more. So if that is the case, then again, you could look to the Dermatology Needleless Serum because that one does not have the zinc in it. But again, you don't need to necessarily seek out a separate zinc product, but it's something that is really nice to see on any ingredient label for products that you may already have. Okay, so those are all the ingredients that I wanted to talk through with you guys. I actually have three more things that I really quickly want to talk through that have been super helpful to me. I apologize. I know that this video is going to be really long, but I had so many things I wanted to share and I didn't want to miss anything. So 
first out of the three is what I've been using as a spot treatment. It's hydrocolloid dressings. And these really confused me at first because I thought it was maybe a patch of acne fighting ingredients that you put on the skin on top of your breakout. That's actually not what it is. It's basically a dressing, if you will, that you apply directly to a breakout that generates moisture for the skin underneath that patch. And then that helps to absorb excess liquids. So any pus that you have from a breakout, it helps to absorb that so that it's able to heal more quickly without the irritation of some sort of spot treatment. So if you can't use benzoyl peroxide spot treatments, I would definitely recommend using these. I have really, really been loving these. So this one is just from CauseRx. It's their Acne Pimple Master Patch. Panoxyl also has these, Hero has them. So I'll link a couple below, but I'll show you guys really quick. They all basically come with a sheet like this that have these little dressings on them. So it's kind of almost like a little tiny rubbery band-aid and you just place that on your breakout. I really like that this comes with different sizes depending on the size of your breakout. One of the reasons that I love this, honestly, is because it kind of helps to mask the breakout. Obviously, you can see that there's something on your skin. Whenever I have these on, Eli's like, you have something on your face. I'm like, yeah, it's intentional. Thank you very much. But I like it because it does kind of help to shield it, make it not look so red so that I'm less tempted to pick. Really helpful for that, but definitely awesome at helping to speed up that healing process and really help to absorb any pus that you have in there. Sorry, I know that that's a gross word, but that's what it does and they've really helped me a lot. So definitely recommend these hydrocolloid dressings. Why is that such a weird word? And then the last two things really quickly are actually specifically related to the dang face masks that we're wearing. So I know I've shared this with you guys, I think in an Amazon favorites video, but silk face masks are really helpful because they're softer and gentler on the skin. So if you have a lot of irritation from wearing a cotton face mask or a different type of fabric, I would definitely recommend using either a silk or satin face mask. I just got these off of Amazon. They came in both gray and black, so I really like them. And this weird thing, if you're like, what the heck is that? So this is something that you lay down on top of your skin like this and you actually put your mask over top of it. So instead of that fabric rubbing against your skin, you have this kind of as a protective barrier. Also, it's great because it just lets you breathe better and you're not swallowing your mask. But this for me is far less irritating than any fabric on my skin. I just had permanent stripes of irritation on my face for the longest time because it didn't really matter. It just was any sort of friction and fabric on my skin because I'm so sensitive was really, really irritating my skin. So this has helped me so much. I wear these all the time. The only thing about them is that if you're going to be wearing it for a long period of time and walking around getting a little bit warm, they do kind of get a little sweaty and generate a little bit of heat, but I would prefer that than the irritation and flakiness. So again, an Amazon find, it came in a pack with multiple. They're amazing. And then you can also wipe them off too so that it's hygienic, so good. So good. Okay, so that is officially everything. Again, I'm so sorry that this was so long, but I really, really hope this was helpful to you guys. If it was, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. All those things really help me out and really help to support my channel, which mean so, so much. Again, everything will be linked in my description box below for you guys, so don't worry about that. Let me know in the comments below, do you currently use any of these products or ingredients? Are you going to try one of these or multiple of these after watching this video? If so, let me know which ones, what are you currently doing for face mask acne? Let's all chat in the comments below. If there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments as well. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.